Have you ever wondered if you can harvest electricity in a very different way? It made me think a lot, and I had to do a couple of research to find the answer. If I just remake another project off the internet, there wouldn't be much innovation going on. It wasn't easy to think of an energy alternative that's not related to wind, solar, hydro, or biogas. But there was this time where an idea just hit me. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of footsteps land each second. Each footstep creates a great amount of force. Force that's equivalent to your own body weight. We know as a fact that an average human takes 7,000 steps a day. So I asked myself, maybe it's possible to harvest electricity from our footsteps. Maybe I can charge my phone or my flashlight with it. Yes, it sounds like a crazy idea. And judging by the sound of it, it doesn't even have a practical use. Neither will it solve the world's energy crisis. But at the end of the presentation, it may even be proven wrong. I'm a Filipino. I live in the Philippines. And just by looking around my surroundings, I can see that a lot of people are suffering from poverty. And just like what Anne Krasinski said, a simple source of light is a big deal for people who don't have access to electricity. Hi, I'm Angelo. I'm 15 years old and I live in the Philippines. I've been making projects since I was four and back then I used to do a lot of things with my grandpa. We used to spend time together making projects. He was my biggest inspiration. If it wasn't for him, I couldn't have learned all the things that I know today and I couldn't have fulfilled all the things that I have achieved. Like winning trophies in the annual national robotics competitions. When he passed away, I continued our hobby in honor of him. Well, I do projects in a day-to-day -day basis, and, and when I have enough free time, I document my projects, then post it on Instructables.com. You will find some of my works in Lifehacker, StumbleUpon, Treehugger, or NetVibes. Aside from posting tutorials and write-ups online, I also compete in the national robotics competitions. Like this, um, I have here my 10x10CM SumoBot. It was last year's champion on the national robotics competitions and it's possible that I could compete in Beijing this year. I like to make projects that has something to do with hi-fi setups, boombox, speakers and amplifiers, robots of course, Arduino and MCUs, and last but not least, renewable energy sources, like solar and wind power. I would like to implement this project on the so-called smart shoes. Shoe companies are designing smart shoes as of today that would sync to your smartwatch. So what's a smart shoe? Well, a smart shoe is a shoe that um, establishes a wireless connection with your smartwatch, then send in the results of the number of footsteps that you've taken, and your current weight. Any sensor that you can place right into your shoe that could send data. Well, let's say you're a hiker. You like to go camping, go outdoors, and explore the wilderness. And sometimes hikers don't want to get lost. That's why they carry GPS. What if you can place a GPS chip inside your shoe so that when you get lost, you can just press a button, then people can start finding you. Or you can use it at least to send um, your GPS coordinates to your smartwatch making it much easier compared to pulling your cell phone or smart device. As a bonus feature, I would like to add a charging capability that would charge USB devices. So when you're outdoors and you don't have access to electricity, you can charge your smartphone with it. My insole generator does not use coils, motors, magnets, or anything that involves moving parts. I only have two pairs of piezoelectric discs. Well, this one's slightly larger than the regular ones because they measure 35 millimeters in diameter. The piezoelectric generator um, produces electricity when both crystals bend inwards. We have a pair mounted back to back. Wait, why make back to back pairs? When you make back to back pairs, you're able to harvest twice the power than just having a piece at one area. To have a better understanding on how my piezoelectric generator works, I'm going to represent the parts that I've used with a tape and two plastic rulers. Imagine that the tape is the PVC and the hole is the hole that was grinded through the PVC surface. Our piezoelectric crystals or discs will be represented by the plastic rulers. 
So this, this is how it goes. Two piezoelectric discs are mounted like a sandwich on the PVC surface. You notice that it's um, mounted back to back and there's a huge gap in between both discs. Now I added a foam pusher for the piezoelectric discs to bend inwards. You all know that piezoelectric elements produce electricity when they are actuated. That means they are subjected to mechanical stress. In our case, we're stepping on it. So the discs bend inwards. That's going to produce a lot of electricity. So why use two? Why not use one? Well, the answer to the question is pretty simple. We want to produce twice the power on the same surface. In our case, you have a back-to-back -back sandwich orientation. Once again, I'm Angelo. Thanks for watching.